what is going on guys welcome back to the channel i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and if you're not hopefully we can sort that out with this video again <laughs> okay now i'm dizzy so in the last video you saw me pretty much build the majority of the guppy tank that we've got set up the guppy breeding tank you're going for a really wild look should look absolutely awesome colors popping everywhere So we've got all the foreground plants in, we've got all the little details, the sticks. As I said before, we're keeping it completely random. I just want it to look natural, like just like stuff's fallen into a field or something and loads of wild plants have started growing. It's not a usual look you sort of see from aquascaping, but I don't care. Plus, it's going to be super easy for anyone else to recreate really, isn't it? It's just aqua soil, some sticks at the back with moss in, a couple of pebbles and some foreground plants everywhere. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I'll put a link up now. Go click it, go have a look, and then come straight back and watch the follow-up video. You kind of need to see the first video for, well, actually, no, it probably work as a standalone. Some quite interesting stuff coming up in this video. We're going to be choosing and adding our fish from some of my other aquariums, so that should be pretty cool. Without further ado, though, let's get on with it. So that is all of our foreground plants done. Look, as you can see, I have packed them in there, but as we always say, plant heavy to start with for the best chance of success. But what we need to do now is all of our background plants in this sort of area here. And to do that, I like to flood the tank. I just find it so much easier planting tall stem plants with the with the tank flooded, because obviously when you put them in then, they already stand up straight. You can see where they are, how they're laying, all that sort of thing. I just think you can achieve a better look from the get go. That sounds so stupid, why do I even say that? I just think you can get a better look from the start if you just plug them in when they're upright. I just, it's just the way I like to do it. Everyone does it a little bit differently. Again, I've seen other aquascapers plug them in and flop them over all in the same direction. So when the when the water fills up, it brings them up with it. I still, I just like to do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. Well, I don't know why I'm still talking. So you can see I've got my hose in there already. I've got a little bit of foam on the end of the inlet pipe, which is on just like, this is just from a filter, an old filter system I had. It would have been the inlet part, but I've just put a hose on it and just stuck a bit of foam. It just means you don't just get it just pouring out at like 100 miles an hour and just destroying your aqua aquascape so i've got that there but also we want something underneath it because it's still otherwise just going to stir up all that aqua soil and the best way i found to do that is just to chuck in a load of paper towel so i've got a load down here and i'm just going to just put it in like this and just start making like a nice little pile of it it will try and sort of find its way through there so just put in loads and you'll be fine just obviously make sure you don't put the tap on full blast to start with not until you've got like a good level of water anyway So now that we're filled up with water, I've just left the uh, the hose still in there at the moment because once we put some water into the filter, it's going to drop the lever a little bit. So there's no point packing that all away and then having to get it all out, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's just a case of putting the filter on now and then we can add our stem plants and tall plants. And here we have it the next day, guys, looking brilliant. I mean, all the bubbles have sort of come off now, which is, well, there's a few there, but nothing too bad. The moss is doing exactly what I wanted to see. It's doing that really sort of nice, it's kind of like, like a wall of moss, if you like. I think eventually they're just going to join together, which would be really good. I will trim them at some point so they don't look quite as raggedy, but we'll just let them settle for a little bit first, work out where they're going. All the foreground plants managed to stay in place, which is brilliant. Sometimes you can find you fill up the water and quite a few of them pop out. But that method that I used to plant in them, you know, with a little bit of water in at the base first, has actually worked really well. It, mean, it means that, like, the aquasol is just ripped the bottom parts of the plant the roots is what i'm trying to say but obviously we need to get our stem plants in now and all our background plants and then also the detail plants that i'm going to be putting in the foreground which is a not a usual way of doing it but i want to try something a little bit different but that's all coming up later on in the video so nothing extraordinary so far i mean it's just a few plants in the tank right nothing out of the unusual but now is the time to take it up a notch this is where the color starts coming in and we can start adding all our fast growing plants. And here are some of the plants that I've got to start with. So this is some really well established Rotala Rotunda Folia. And actually that's the HRAS, just that this light isn't powerful enough to make the reds come out properly. But the light in this tank, which is the twin star light, which is a, a bit more powerful, well, a lot more powerful, it should be able to get the reds to come out a lot better. Now, if you, you don't have to have a really high end light like this, it'll work with any light to be honest but you know you get what you pay for and if you get an rgb which is red green 
and blue LEDs, you do tend to get more coloration coming out in those reds of your stem plants or any other plants for that matter. So because we've got Ludwigius Palustrius Super Red there as well, which will go nicely red. And we've also got that Vallisneria Nana at the back, which I also want as a background plant. I think that'll look really good. In between those gaps, just having those nice trailing greens in the background, along with the Rotala Rotundifolia. Let's get into the tank. So guys, I'm just jumping straight into the tank with my hands. Sometimes I find this is the best way to pluck out your plants. Obviously trimming scissors have their place, but sometimes it's it's really quite hard to find the right snip point, if you like. But if you can run your fingertips down the stem to the point where you want it and just pluck it with your fingernails, you can get it just at the right place without trimming off any other bits that you don't want to. And the reason I'm doing it like that and not just trimming off a big section is because I actually want to leave the main parts of the plant inside of the tank. This way they can continue growing, then I'll have more plants to pluck out again later on. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> So after I've trimmed the plants that I want, I like to lay them out on a board or the floor or whatever you've got and put them in size order. That might seem a little pointless, but it's not because basically the longer stuff can be planted at the back and then the short stuff at the front and so on and so forth. So you get like a banked effect to your stem plants. It just looks so much better this way in the tank. Right, then it's time to start planting. Make sure you get your plants nice and deep into that substrate so there's no chance of it being pulled up by the flow or fish or anything like that. Also, it won't be long at all before we need to trim these stems themselves and replant them. The reason we do that is obviously so we get even more stem plants growing out of the trim point. So you get like sort of two stems coming out of one trim, if you like. So you can exponentially double your... Well, there's a word we know at the moment, isn't it? Exponential. Exponentially... It was quite hard to say as well. Exponentially double your amount of stems every couple of weeks. I'm making sure I fill in all the gaps in the background with the stem plants. And you'll notice the really bright red ones coming in in a minute. These are the Rotala HRA and the plant is amazing. They're not quite as red at the moment as they could be. And that's because I've been using a weak light on them. But with the light we've got in this tank, they should be bright red in no time at all. Within about two weeks time, these are going to look absolutely amazing. And to finish it off, this nice little clump of the Rotala HRA. Now this was actually grown from Tropica's 1-2 grow range and was actually only a centimetre tall when I planted it a few months back. Look how amazing it is now. So I have some good news guys. This tank here was at like just every morning I come in here after the lights were off. Well, months I put them on. And then I noticed that there's I would notice that there's planaria all over the glass and I was just like, oh, I hate it because I don't mind a few little bugs and things in the water, don't get me wrong, but these planaria things are ugly. <laughs> it's not nice, to I feel horrible saying that, but no, they are, they're horrible little things. So I've killed them all. <laughs> I actually have, like, hang on. So I've got this stuff here, no planaria, and it does exactly what it says on the, on the tin. It says for, for red bee shrimp use, but I just used it with my cherries and crystals in here and there's not been any, they're not paying me by the way, I just thought I'd show you guys a good product, it's called No Planaria and it works well. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you in case you're having a planaria problem, then that's all you need to do is get that stuff because there is barely any waste that goes into this tank and people said that a lot of planaria happens because of waste in the tank. There's like, I barely even feed it because obviously there's so much food being produced for the, the, the shrimp in this tank anyway with the amount of plants in there, biofilm, you know, there is always a gentle little biofilm on the top as well, which is good. That's what you want for your shrimp, isn't it? But yeah, planaria, dead. Also, yesterday I performed a massive water change on this tank, this tank, on this tank, this tank. And then straight away, which was stupid of me, I fed Pancho afterwards. I should have fed him before, but it doesn't matter. Here he is. Hello, fella. Look how... Why? <laughs> Okay, so maybe they do eat sand. <laughs> That's all right, it can't hurt him. He spits it back out, it's all good. Uh, he's getting really good at eating worms now. So I've only switched him to worms in the past sort of like three, four weeks. And like I just dangle a little bit in there now and bang, he's straight on it. It's so cool. But it's really good, like free food source if you like. And it's just making him grow really well. 
and his gills are the most red I've ever seen. Like the lights have just come on. He's only just woken up and his gills are that red. I mean, brilliant. If you've got, a, if you've got axolotl, earthworms all the way. So the tank has come along beautifully. You know, we've got all those stem plants in the background. It's looking great. In the next video, guys, I'm going to be adding the fish and also adding a lot more detail to the front. Not like masses, but like little little colour injections, if you like, dotted around all in there. Oh, that's just going to look brilliant. But with the fish as well, that's coming up in the next episode. And I'll see you on the next one.